and at the same time, uh, they can be overlapping of the two. They can be overlapping of the two. They can be overlapping of the two. For example, let's say the so building because of becoming old, because of building becoming old, building collapsed and accidentally we have to do with the air and then we are injured. So the building collapsing, building collapsing, because of being old, like we can explain that, explain that on the basis of the, the, the lifespan of the building. So this is purely natural. Because all composite things are impermanent. Um, the things have their own lifespan. So because of that, the building collapsed. And the fact that you are there, you are injured. You are injured means that this is the experience of the pain. This experience of pain is related to the, the, the karmic cause and effect. So this karmic cause and effect, the fact that the building collapsed, collapsed, you are injured, so there, the natural cause and effect is operating, plus the karmic cause and effect is operating. Both over operating. So the, the, we see that there is a the overlap the two things happening. So where sentient beings' feelings are involved, feeling of pain, happiness. So anything to do with this, it is karmic cause and effect. Karma is involved. Okay, this is what, one thing that we need to keep in mind. So with this in mind, um, in dependent origination, we are talking about the, 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 this morning, two levels or three levels. And um, what the Buddha taught, what the Buddha is uh, teaching here, and which Arimantri was explaining, the commenting on, is primarily the, uh, the, uh, the dependent origination of the cause and effect. As how the world, how the universe is operating, the, how the universe is operating, the how the habitats, the the world, the universe, how they come into being, and how the inhabitants, the beings, the human beings, how they are operating, how they come into existence. So this is really explained on the basis of the twelve things of dependent origination. Okay, we'll continue reading this. <coughs> So we uh, page 63, the last paragraph. Page 63, last paragraph. Um, last paragraph. The Bodhisattva Mahasattva Maitriya then replied to the Venerable Shariputra. Venerable, Venerable Shariputra, you want to know what dependent arising is in the statement made by the Bhagavan. The Lord of Dharma, the omission one, big shoes. Whoever sees dependent arising sees the Dharma. Whoever sees the Dharma sees the Buddha. Well, the phrase dependent arising means that something arises because something else already exists. Something is born because something else has already been born. Okay, so this um, the in Tibetan it is the tishu, the the I do not really, uh, I do not want to alter the translations too much, unless until there are serious mistakes there. Uh, I don't want to, to touch the translation to somebody else. So usually uh, it would be much easier to translate as the addition because this exists, that exists. Because this is produced, that is produced. And that is simple. To listen to it, you, you can feel you know, that the meaning becomes very clear. Because this exists, that exists. Because this is produced, that is produced. So this is what is the, this translation is supposed to be like this. Who the well the phrase dependent arising means that something arises because something else already exists. Because means because this exists, that exists. Something is born because something else was already born. Because this is produced because that is produced. As simple as that. And then the, the next one is that is to say ignorance causes formations, formations cause consciousness. So these these three things, okay, three things are there. Because this is produced, that is produced. No. Because this exists, that exists. Because this is produced, that is produced. Because of ignorance, karma is produced. Because of karma, karma to formation. Here, formation. Uh, formation. Okay, so I'll explain this further. Formation. 
because ignorance formation is created, because formation consciousness is created, the twelve lanes are explained. Okay, so there are three things here, and these three things are asanga, are asanga, fourth century incredible great saint scholar, plus a uh, great saint scholar plus um, who had the direct communion of Arimatriya. Now, how many heard about this story? Arasanga and the meeting with Arimatriya. One, two, three, four, five, six. No? Okay. Um, to make quick, the first, in the first place, those of those of us who did not hear the story, maybe you go to the group discussion and others can quickly share the story, but give you just a skeleton of the story. Is that Aramatriya, um, no, Arya Sangha, why his, all these epithets that we attach to these great saints. Asanga is given the epithet Arya, Arya Sangha, because he is, and he is respected for all the heavenly Rishti, part of seeing and above. Part of seeing and above, you are referred to as the Aryas. Likewise, Arya, Asan, Arya Nagarjuna. Arya Nagarjuna. And then the, say, Bodhisattva Shani, Rashita, Bodhisattva Shani, Deva. Otherwise, most of them, they are referred to as the Acharya. Acharya means the Christ, same scholar. Okay. Um, Arya Sangha. He built, okay, Arya Sangha, just in this kind of story was that Arya Sangha, initially he was, he had a special kind of connection with Arimatriya and he wanted to have to the vision of Arimatriya. Then Arimatriya, who, uh, of course at the time of Buddha, he was around there. So meanwhile, it is said that the Arimatriya is in the form of a the deity form, the deity form. Then Arya Sangha, he wanted to have a meeting with Arimatriya. For that matter, he meditated. He just did a single, medi a single part of meditation to have the vision of Arimatriya. And he didn't succeed in the first three years. He gave up, came out. Again, he was inspired by you know, several incidents. One, he met with what? Shapri. Okay. Okay. The, the very, very elderly gentleman making needle out of solid iron. They're true with the soft cotton. Soft cotton to really, even to make one needle will take like ages. So he had two or three samples of needles there. And what are you doing? I'm making needle out of this solid iron with the rubbing it with the very soft cotton. And he said, yes, look at these, these are my needles. He showed them, so that, okay, if this is how somebody has such enthusiasm, so my enthusiasm was so weak. Then again he dedicated another three years. Again he failed, he came out, then what happened? and there was a bird and the Yes, there was um, the, uh, the bird, there was the pigeon. Pigeon in his cave, and who was every morning he was getting out and with his very soft feather, the feather was trying hitting the, the, the mouth of the, the cave and the mouth was, the, the, the mouth of the cave was dented. It was rock. Rock was dead because of this very soft feather. And he saw this and oh my enthusiasm must be too weak. Look at this. Even a soft thing. If you do it consistently, then even the dead can be formed on the, the rock. So he again did the end of the three years. Then he came out and what happened? So two and a half years? Huh? Okay, that I took. That's why I took not here. Okay. What a dog is yes. He saw again the water the 
water drops dripping, dripping, and then the hole was made on the rock. Again, he went in. Total 12 years. 12 years? What? 3 into 4. And then finally he gave up, he came out, and then he saw uh, the, the dog, a dog, stray dog, with a half body, rotten, and with maggots. And then he felt so compassionate, the dog was biting at him, coming, barking at him, against him. And he was so, the, uh, the, he felt so compassionate, and then he was thinking of helping the dog to remove the maggots. For that he was, he, the dog should be saved, and the maggots should not be harmed. So for that matter, he wanted to take out the maggots through his mouth, the tongue. So he closed his eyes and, and tried to, to remove the, the maggots by his tongue. And then he, instead of touching the dog, he could smell fragrance. And he was just wondering, what is this? He opened his eyes and saw Arya Madriya there. And then like a small child, making a complaint to the mother, he complained to Arya Madriya. How come the 12 years I the practice and you did not come? You have no compassion. You are Maitriya, Maitriya, Maitriya meaning the one that shows love. You do not have any love. Then Ari Maitriya, he showed his robes. He, Look at this, this is your spit. When he was meditating, maybe once in a while he was throwing the spit, throwing the spit like this, spitting. And he said that I was with you right from the beginning. The moment you were there, you came inside, I was there. So only thing because of your heaviness of the karmic debt, you cannot see that. Otherwise, I was only there right from the beginning. Okay, this was Arimatriya. Arimatriya, in his text, he beautifully put these three points into what he calls as the three conditions. <coughs> three conditions, three conditions form cause and effect. Three conditions. The first one is the unwavering condition. Unwavering condition. Number one. Number two, condition of the impermanence. Number three. Concomitancy. Condition. Uh, the, the condition of concomitancy or the condition of potentiality. Okay. The unwavering condition. Number two, condition of the impermanence. Number three. The condition of concomitancy or condition of potentiality. I'll explain each one of them. Number one, unwavering condition. Number two, condition of impermanence. Number three, the condition of concomitancy or condition of potentiality. Okay, this is very important. This is very important. And see in your own life. These are all we study theoretically and also practically speaking in your own life. See if it really works that way. The first one is the, on the unwavering condition. Meaning that, that any composite phenomena, any result should necessarily have a cause. There's no randomness. There's no randomness. There's no randomness. There must be a cause to all these phenomena are asking causes. So any result should necessarily have a cause. Without a cause, things can never randomly come to be or somebody just dictates something and something happens. No, it never happens like this. There must be a cause there, number one. Number two, not only the issue with the cause, the cause just as the result is impermanent, the cause must be impermanent. If the cause is not impermanent, if the cause does not change, then they, how can the, the result be changing? The cause must be impermanent. This is extremely important. And all these reasonings, the reasonings you will find in the Brahmana Vartika chapter 2. The cause must be impermanent. If the cause is static, if the cause is not changing, only when the seed changes, then should will, should will come to be. If the seed remains as it is, should never come to be. Like, so therefore the cause, unless the cause changes, the result will never come to be. Because the cause changes, then the result can come. And depending on how, how effective the cause change, then the effectiveness of the result also comes to be. 
So it's all de determined by the, the principle of impermanence, principle of the changing nature of the cause. So the first one is, the cause must be there, unwavering. The cause must be, it, it indicates, it infers, with the result, it infers that unwaveringly, invariably, there should be a cause there, number one. Number two, this cause must be in permanent nature, number two. Number three, that to have to experience apples, to, to, have, ex, to, to have apples, you have to plant apple seeds, not mango seeds. So the mango seed is a cause, it is, um, it, it is impermanent, but it is not the, it is not concomitant with the apple tree. So if you want an apple tree, you must plant apple seed, not mango seed. So apple seed is the concomitant cause of the apple trees. And apple seed is has the potentiality to produce apple tree. Okay, so these are the three conditions required for any cause to be to give rise to a result. So these three things are indicated here. The first one says, who's ever, who's ever seen no? Well, the phrase dependent arising means that something arises because something else already exists, which means because this exists, that exists. Because this cause exists, that result exists. This is the condition of the first one is unwavering condition. Number two, something is born because something else was already born. This is uh, the second condition, condition of impermanence. That, uh, that it is produced because that is produced. Then number three, that is to say, ignorance causes formations. Wisdom will not cause the formation. Formation, formation here refers to the contaminated karmas. Contaminated karmas are given rise to by the ignorance, not by the wisdom. Not by the wisdom of emptiness. So, the, this ignorance, number one, ignorance, and number two is karma or the formation. Translate this formation here, karma. Number three is consciousness. Number four is name and form. Number five, sense sources. Number six, contact. Number seven, feeling. Number eight, craving. Number nine, grasping. Number ten, becoming or existence. Same. Number eleven, birth. Number twelve, Aging and Very good. Okay. So these 12 are known as 12 links of dependent origination. Okay. So what we do is that we return to page 318. We'll turn to page 318. Wheel of Life. Wheel of Life. Um, What we have here is a very standard view of life. Nowadays, the, there are many paintings which are not at all accurate. So this painting was initially commissioned or initially instructed by the Buddha himself. Buddha himself. And um, so this, again, view of life, you have to know how it, this the view of life came to being. Um, there was the two kings, two kings, King um, Uteyana and King Bimbisara. The two kings, King Uteyana was a very powerful king with a huge empire, and King Bimbisara, a more modest the kingdom, smaller kingdom. And two of them were friends. King Uteyana one time um, sent a present gift to King Bimbisara, and the gift was such a valuable armor made of jewels, made of gems. And King Bimbisara initially he was very sad and so happy and then soon he became very um, the disappointed because when he received a gift he had to repay something. Repay a King Uteyana with something else, something of same value. But he being from a smaller kingdom, he did not have, he could not think of anything which is of that value. So he approached the Buddha and the Buddha said, don't worry, Send somebody, send somebody, a painter, a good painter from your kingdom, and send him to me. Then the, he sent a painter, then Buddha instructed this painting. Buddha gave this instruction. 
And King Bibisa was so happy, the Buddha said that this is your gift from um, the gift to King Uttayana. Then he called upon King Uttayana and uh, asked King Uttayana to come with his, the, what do you call it, cavalries, then the whole, the army. King Uttayana was, at, initially he was a little upset, he was a little disappointed and angry that does he mean to wage war against me by asking me to uh, bring my cavalry, his army, and so forth? And there was a very a wise minister with him. The minister said, it doesn't matter. Uh, even if he wants to wage a war, you uh, will win the war because you, because you are a much bigger, bigger kingdom, you are more powerful. And let me see what, let us see what, you know, this uh, King Bimisara wanted to do. So, he went. And King Bimisara did the in the middle of the, the ground, he got off from his horse and then he turned, he and his one or two ministers turned towards King Uden. Then King Uden also alighted his the horse and they met at the center and then he presented this scroll to King Uden. King Uden was very fascinated. What is this scroll? Why? 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 You know, the, I need to bring my whole, the, the retinue, the army, and the cavalry, elephants, all just for this scroll. Why? So he unfolded this, and the, it was wrapped, draped in five layers of very precious, expensive cloth, the cloths. And finally, inside was a painting. So why this painting is so special to be draped in five different colored uh, the, the cloths? Then he just went to to just study this. He was exploring what all these painting was painting there, and then he was asking. The minister was also there, the vice minister. He was asked, "Who's that guy at the top?" And there was a Buddha, and the, the minister said, that, "Don't go, don't call him guy. He's the enlightened one." What do you mean by enlightened? He has already left the samsara. He has no. He is freed from samsara altogether. Where is he? He's in King Bimbisara's. Uh, the kingdom. Oh, can I also invite him? Yes, of course, you have to approach King Bibisara. Then King Bibisara became very important to this to him. Okay, this is how the this came to be. Then the Buddha also instructed that this painting must be painted on the walls, on the, the, the what do you call that? The facade of the, the the front, the veranda of the entrance of the monastery. So that anybody, the visitors, they'll come to study this and they will know about this. This is so important. Nowadays, this is in most of the monasteries, old monasteries, you see that these paintings are there, but they are all not standard. Not standard, meaning that some mistake is always there. For example, one mistake that I'd like to point to you is that the what is on the opposite side of the Buddha? Moon. Moon. Right? In many of the paintings, even in the big, very standard monasteries, instead of the moon, you will see Aravalokiteshvara or the, you know, like this. Think of the, what's this moon? The painters, they are not philosophers. The painters, they thought that instead of the moon, I will, you know, paint something more beautiful, more holy. Aravalokiteshvara, this, they paint it like this. And then what is this, the, the, these two letters, these two stanzas, right? Okay, instead of that, we put some fruits. So we move the two stands and put some fruits there and we move the moon and put our Ramakrishnara or, or, or Buddha Mati, Buddha Amitabha because we will take birth in the pure land so Buddha Amitabha, Buddha Amitabha so all these distortions happened okay, so this is a very standard view of life now that we already studied the five points from Aradhigarjuna's stanza we will see that this painting for us, it is not difficult now. Okay, um, quickly tell me. Okay, to, to be very clear, how, how many circles are there? Innermost, then the second, third, fourth. Four circles are there. Do you see four circles? What do you see in the innermost circle? Perfections. Uh, what do you see in the innermost circles? Three, three creatures there. Three creatures there. These three creatures, and the innermost circle is known as the circle of the afflictions. 
circle of afflictions and depicted by three creatures there. These three creatures, they symbolize the, the three poisons, three root afflictions or three poisons, attachment, aversion and ignorance. So the bird symbolizes attachment, the snake symbolizes aversion, the pig symbolizes ignorance. Okay. And do you see something so typical about these, these three creatures? What do you see something so typical about it? The snake and the chicken are coming out of the... Okay, the, the bird and the snake, these two are coming out, these two tails, they are coming out of the, the, the mouth of the pig, right? So there are two, there are two versions of doing this, <clears throat> both are correct. One is that these three animals, they are all connected to each other. Meaning one coming out of the mouth of the other like this, indicating that these three afflictions, in fact, all the disturbing emotions within us, all the disturbing, how many disturbing emotions are within us? Attachment, anger, jealousy, hate, just spite, then, then pride, then oh, so we have only few. <laughs> because we have no experience. Huh? Arjuna, no experience. Spite. Spite, yeah. No experience. Jealousy. Huh? Jealousy. Jealousy. Huh? Okay, so there are innumerable, the negative thoughts are there, afflictions are there. Or, yet, if you put them into family, families, there are three families. The three families, all these millions of afflictions, they're all going to the three families. One is the family of attachment, other the family of aversion, next the family of ignorance, three. In other words, we see that when the afflictions arise, what happens is our mind moves. Our mind moves. So, we things in love this morning, said the involuntary pull and push. So, push, pull and push happens in the mind. When the anger arises, when anger arises, the push happens. The mind pushes the object away from you. When the attachment arises, pull. When the ignorance is there, then the okay. When the pull and push is not there, when it's neutral, the ignorance. Either pull, attachment, push, aversion, or neutral, ignorance. This is what happens. And all, for example, miserliness, Miserliness fall, falls in the class of the attachment. Spite falls in the, the, the family of aversion. Hate, hatred falls in the family of aversion. Then the ignorance. We see that the, these are the three families of afflictions. So uh, the, the circle of affliction is depicted by these three animals. And then seeing that these two, the other two creatures coming from the mouth of the pigments, Ignorance is root. From ignorance, all other afflictions arise. Okay, we can go a little into more detail of how from ignorance all the afflictions arise. We can also go into detail, uh, maybe a little later. A little later, yeah. Okay, now what we said was this morning, five points. Five points, we begin from the we began from samsara, now we begin from the opposite side. We will begin from the opposite side. Huh? Seven rasa and ignorance, inevitable attention, and affliction. So here, of the five points, five points ignorance, no, affliction, that is the gross affliction. So otherwise, the first three, seven rasa and ignorance, inevitable attention, affliction, all these three fall under the category of affliction. So when we break this affliction to three, ignorance, inappropriate attention, affliction, this affliction is a gross affliction. Okay, these three will fall on the category of affliction. So these three points are indicated by the innermost circle. What is next? What is contaminated karma? Afflictions give rise to the contaminated karma. So the second circle, what do you see? Just tell me what is so typical that you see in the second circle. Black, black, black. Okay, those people who say white and black, they already know. 
What I'm asking. Okay, so white and black. Half white, half black. Half white, half black. White versus karma. And black, non versus karma. Non versus karma, but negative karma. White versus karma. And black, negative karma. Okay, so we, and yet we see that the, the whole this wheel, the wheel is held by the demon, in the demon's mouth, demon's fangs. So this indicates that the whole, the whole wheel is held in the demon's fangs, the mouth, is the representation of impermanence, of death, impermanence of death. As long as, we, as long as we are born, we are, as long as we are born in samsara, this will inevitably end with death. This is the death, representation of death. Now the white, white karma is also in the, the, the demon's mouth. So why the white, virtuous? How come the virtuous is in the, in the mouth of demon? Mouth the demon is not good, it's bad. How the virtuous? come out of the mouth of the demon. Anybody? Contaminated. The karma is contaminated. Conta the virtues are contaminated? Yeah. How? Oh. By itself grasping ignorance. It gives rise to suffering of suffering, all pervasive suffering. There's virtues, no? Virtues will not give rise to suffering. Only the Say it again, it gives rise to experience of unsatisfactory nature. It gives rise to it gives rise to unsatisfactory nature, it gives rise to certain change. Then you get attached to it, that no, 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 that is different. First let's stick to this. How this white karma falls under white karma or the, the virtuous karma falls under the demon's hand. Demon's hand is not good, right? So why it should be It's not under your control to I mean, um, at your will, you can't control it. You have to keep creating the cause. Of course, the okay. virtue coming is in our hands, right? No, we can control yeah, that. Right? No? You have to keep yeah. creating it. It's not like a it's huh? like a planting like tree. Two dreams that you spoke about. Uh -huh. The dream of the ghost and the dream of the soul. So then we don't have freedom. We don't have freedom. But virtue coming, we have to freedom, right? Yeah. We can just come because it's also we are not out of the dream yet. Uh -huh. So since we are still in the dream, uh -huh. the virtuous karma still comes under. Uh, how how the, how? The result of virtuous karma, we don't have any freedom. Why not? If you do the virtuous karma, the virtuous karma. You do yes, but to that end, the result. The result is X. For example, the, the, you know the law of karma it says that the karma that you accumulated, results will be inevitable. Results will be inevitable. Karma, you will never experience the result of a karma which you have never, which you have never, which you did not engage. But the result of the karma, the, the, you cannot escape from the result of the karma which you did. These are two basic axioms of our karma. Well, eventually, it will. Okay, this is a very important question. Why the virtue, the white karma, virtuous karma, is in the is in demon's mouth? Uh, it's in the cycle of samsara. How come? The virtue will take you away from samsara, no? But uh, the afflictions... Uh, no, afflictions are not, not virtuous. They are bad. In the dream, suppose there is a child, a poor child. Now first, and you first be direct and then give the example. Mm -hmm. uh, because eventually you will have a negative result. This is really for ideas and ideas. Okay, Shadira. Yeah. Which, which, which one? Based on the past karma. It doesn't last. Huh? Based on the Based past, on the past karma. karma, yes. Uh, they, uh, they got what? They got married? Uh, based on the past, past negative karma? No, no, they based on the past uh, previous positive karma. That is the virtue. That is the white right one. Uh, this, in this life, they have virtue. Yes. Uh, 
So that virtue is the white one. Yes, past virtue is white. Past virtue is white. So past virtue why is it that in the demon's hand? That also is common. Maybe uh, that is not limited. Even the Buddha's mind is also in common. No, no, no. Buddha's outside. Buddha's yes, body is in common. Okay, if it, this is the sun is coming, the rice is so that is far away. <laughs> we cannot explain this. Self grasping there is this. So what's the problem? So any type of virtue. It doesn't last. Huh? It doesn't last. Then yeah, the Buddha's mind also, you yeah, know, it's important. No, the the virtue is actually that is uh put here, this uh virtues. Okay, very good. karma. Even the virtuous karma is of two kinds. Contaminated virtuous karma, uncontaminated virtuous karma. Two. Within the virtuous karma, there are two. Contaminated virtuous karma and uncontaminated virtuous karma. Two. Right? All the virtues which we do, unless until, okay, we recite the mantra, Tiyata, Gade, Gade, Para, Gade, Para, Sam, Gade, Gode, so we recite this mantra. This mantra, there are five parts to this gate, gate, para gate, para samgate, both so five. What are these five indicating? What do what are the what are the things which are indicated by these five points? Anybody? Five parts. Huh? Five parts. These five indicate the five parts. Where go, go, go beyond, go utterly beyond and establish your enlightenment. Five parts towards enlightenment. When you reach the third part, gate, gate, para gate, third, third part, part of seeing, part of seeing, this which, okay, this is, okay, I already said it, part of seeing, right? So when you reach the part of seeing, you are entitled as, you are entitled as Aryas. Arya meaning superior beings. When you reach the third part, third part is when you see emptiness directly. When you see emptiness directly, then you reach the third path, and third path above, you are referred to as the Arya beings. Arya beings meaning? Well, superior beings. In Tibetan, it is Papa, Papa Kansa. Papa Kansa. Papa is superior. Superior in what way? Superior in seeing the reality directly. What's so special? Why, why is, if you see emptiness directly, you are referred to as superior? Because at that point, Actual cleansing happens. Actual cleansing of the mind happens only at the part of seeing. Before that, cleansing is more suppression. Suppression of the negativities, not actually removing from the root. Whereas from the part of seeing, the metal stains are cleansed by removing the roots. Okay, so that is part of seeing. Now, contaminated karmas, uncontaminated karmas. Karmas that you accumulate, by seeing emptiness directly. When you see emptiness directly, when you accumulate the karma, when you see emptiness directly, only that karma becomes uncontaminated. Otherwise, when you don't see emptiness directly, you engage in any karmas, they become contaminated karma. The contaminated karmas, they are under the, under the sway. Okay, now what the other says, like Archanji, then Dhotanida, all what he said is, when you do any karma, not directly affected by the non-dual wisdom of emptiness, not directly affected by the direct experience of emptiness, then all our karma becomes contaminated. Because if the non-dual non wisdom of emptiness is not there, then the self grasping ignorance comes in. Ignorance comes in. So that karma is going to be affected by the ignorance. So ignorance, karma, affected by the contamination of the even though you do some virtue for example okay I, I'm not too sure how many of you have realized emptiness directly how many of you are the part of seeing how many of you are the, the first gade or maybe second gade no, not the first gade. <laughs> then the third one how many are the third Shadi is very close to that. Okay. Only when we reach third gade, then we start having uncontaminated virtuous karma. All before that, all karmas that we accumulate, they are contaminated. All the virtues, 
non virtuous of negative karmas, of course non contaminated, of course contaminated. Even the virtues are also contaminated. Contaminated by self grasping ignorance. Contaminated by self grasping ignorance. Okay. So self grasping ignorance. When self grasping ignorance, then that is samsara. So the demon, demon is symbolizing the de the, the demon symbolizes the samsara. And the, the wheels being in the demon's mouth symbolizes impermanence of the dead. So, as, so all these, what is inside the wheel, they are under the samsara. Samsara meaning they are under the self-grasping ignorance. As long as we have the self-grasping ignorance, that is samsara. And the Bangalore is not samsara. Don't think that Bangalore is samsara. Right? Don't think India is samsara. World is samsara. No. Samsara is when you are in the sway of self-grasping ignorance, that is samsara. Samsara is not to be seen outside. Your mind affected by ignorance, that is samsara. Okay, I want you have a question. Why are the three poisons in the white background? Three poisons. Three poisons. First, uh, first, 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 the first one, the first one, the last one. Okay, first, okay, that's good for the, the picture inside to be more visible. Yeah, the white meaning the second circle. Second circle, the second circle, half white, half black. That has a significance. Inside, the white part has some significance. And don't ask me why the circle is smaller inside. <laughs> right? Okay. Now, what do you see in the third circle? Six. Six rounds. Okay. So what we done, what we of the five points, what we covered, the first three we covered under? Huh? The first, the five points. Five points from Aranagarjuna stanza. The, the first three, first three meaning of the self-grasping ignorance, inappropriate attention, and affliction. These two combined together, these two combined together is ignorance. No. Afflictions that is depicted by innermost circle. Then the second circle was depicted contaminated karmas. Very good. Okay, now what is left of the four, five points? What is left? What is left? Samsara is left. Samsara means the resultant state. With these afflictions and contaminated karmas, where are we going to suffer? Suffering. So that is depicted by the third circle. Third circle, then we, with these afflictions and the contaminated karmas, where we will take birth is the six realms. So the six realms are depicted there. The from the bottom, bottom is hell. The what is that? Hell, hell realm. And to the left side of this bottom, but the bottom hell realm is Hanu's realm. To the right side of the hell bay, hell realm is Hanu realm. So three low realms. Then. Uh, to the to the above of the uh, hell no hungry goes the above okay the above uh, the above the uh, the hungry goes which means towards your left left hand above the hungry goes is the human realm and above the animal realm is the god realm god realm and at the top top meaning the yes uh, the sixth one, that is the, okay, that is the, okay, no, no, so the, okay, that's just opposite. Above the animal realm is the god realm, and above that is the asuras, asuras or the demigods, demigods. So, both fall under the god realm, both fall under the god realm, demigods are little distinct kind of gods, demigods. Demigods, they consider to be, they are considered to be very intelligent. At the same time, they have a tremendous element of jealousy. This is a demarcating uh, the feature of the demigods. Oftentimes, there's wars happening between the gods and the demigods. Okay, so what? Yeah. Above the demigods, because the tree is of 
He says, this is what I said. About the animal realm is the demigods. First I said the god. God. Uh, it is the demigods. <laughs> yes, that's true. And then the fight. I don't think the fight is that simple. The, you know, the, but what, what, no, this very simple fight is, is about uh, the, the tree. The tree the trees grown in the demigod and the fruits are the, the, seen in the god realm. This is very simple, right? But maybe the fight is even more than that. It's not just over the fruits. Okay. So which means the human realm is most of the scary things. You will not never fight for the fruits, right? Okay, so sometimes these legends, I'm not too sure, these legends, they are, there is, other words, maybe, you know, related to the earlier times. Trade wars. Huh? Trade wars. Trade okay, trade wars more complicated than the, the fruits, right? <laughs> trade wars no, more complicated than the fruits. Very complicated. So the, the fruits, the one tree, two trees. Okay, anyway, this tree is considered as a wishful fruit tree, a very special tree. Okay. Then what do you see in the next circle? Twelve lanes. Twelve lanes. Twelve lanes. These are known as the twelve lanes of dependent origination. Okay, now from this Sadhisattva Sutra, Rising Sutra, we talked about the twelve lanes. Ignorance, formation, consciousness, name and form, our sense sources, contact, feeling, attachment, grasp, the grasping, becoming, Birth, then aging and death. Twelve links. Um, this twelve link, this is so important. Okay, what is this twelve link? Why the twelve links are indicated here? It's for the reason that the inner circle, how the innermost circle is connected to the second, how the second one is connected to the third. These these three links are in detail explained by the the twelve links, out of the circle. This is a detailed explanation of the three inner circles. Okay. Um, let's say from the top, we begin from the top. Uh, do you see one person with the one, one person, a blind person with the stick? Do you see that on the top? Do you see that? Sanjay, do you see that? You see that, right? At the top, the outermost circle, outermost circle at the top is one person with the stick. So that is the, that is symbolic of the ignorance. That's about the ignorance of the, of the 12 links. Um, okay, the, tomorrow morning I expect all of us to have the 12 links on our fingertips. Right? 12 links on our fingertips. We must have the 12 links on our fingertips. Not the second session, not the afternoon second session, but tomorrow morning. I expect all of us to have the 12 links on our fingertips. If not, then the retreat is finished. Okay, 12 links on the fingertips tomorrow morning. First one is ignorance. Ignorance, then with the ignorance what happens? With the ignorance, okay, what we, what we studied with the five points. Five points, in pictorial we see the three innermost circles. And these five points in great detail, the 12 links are explained. Okay, with five points what we see is, um, the first one is what? From the ignorance, beginning with the ignorance, first one is the ignorance, then inappropriate attention, in affliction, okay. Okay, so the first three combined together is ignorance, first three combined together is ignorance, and then the next one is karma. So the first one is ignorance, first three combined together is afflictions. So the first one here is the ignorance depicted by the blind person. Then the next one is the potter. Next one is the potter. Potter. Potter with the pots. Pots of different shapes and different sizes and different colors. Who decides the, the different shapes, sizes and the colors of the pots? Who decides? The potter decides. So likewise, what kind of birth that we take in the next life? What kind of birth that we take in our life? That is decided by the karma. Just as the, the pots are decided, the shape, color, size, are all decided by the potter. Likewise for us, what kind of birth we take in the next life? That is determined by the karma. 
That is, so number two is the karma. Karma, the, it is referred to here in this translation as the formation. In Tibetan, the word is duje. Duje le. Duje is a short form of duje le. Le is karma. Duje is it compounded or composite or the, the formation or formed. Formed. Formation, yeah? Okay, to see the number two is the karma. Number two is karma. Then, the, okay, from number two, we jump to number eight. What is number eight? Okay, yes, what do you see there, picture? Huh? Number eight, number eight. Okay. Okay. Something eating. It's actually so. This is a very the, the painting. It's not too. The print is not too clear. It is um, the alcoholic reaching out to alcohol. So that is attachment or the craving, attachment or craving. That is number eight. And then number nine. What do you see, number nine? Monkey grasping at fruits. Monkey grasping at fruit. Okay, monkeys. Did you see the monkeys when they eat the fruits? They they are eating one fruit and grasping another one, which means excessive craving, excessive. So this is known as the grasping, excessive craving. Number nine. What is number ten? <coughs> number ten. Pregnant women. Number 10, pregnant woman. Okay. Then number 11, a mother giving birth. Mother giving birth. Number 11. Then number 4. Okay. Don't think that I'm randomly just going through the, the number, the, the links. You have to know why. You have to know from which number, which jump to which. Okay. From number 1, I jump to? From number 2, I jump to? A to? 9 to, 10 to, 11 to, 4 to, 4 to, 4 to, not yet, just not yet, okay, 4 is name and form, name and form, what do you, what do you see there, number 4, huh? a boatman with 2 passengers, Boatman with two passengers. Boatman is just extra. We only should be focus, we should focus on two men, two passengers there. The two passengers they indicate our body and our mind. Our body, our body, which we got from our parents. Our mind, which we got from our past life. These two things come together. To the two passengers come into the same boat. Till you cross the river, you should not fight. So you should be together. Whether you like it or not, you should be together. Right? Truly cross there. Otherwise, you both of you die. So likewise, your body and your mind, these two are put together in the same boat by the karma. These put, two are put in the same boat. Name and form. Name referring to the mind and form your body. Name and form. Okay. This is number four. Name and form. What is number five? What is number five? House with six, um, house with six windows. House with six windows. Okay, name and form is number four. Name and form is when you are when you conceive in the mother's womb. When you are conceived in mother's womb, you have your you your mind came from your past life, and your body, the the parent substance, your mind simply glued to the parent substance. So you have the body from the parents. And your mind, they in the mother's womb. Then the number um, number five, the house with six windows. So as you're in the mother's womb, what you do is that you grow, you grow, and then you grow, you develop your body develops, your body develops to the extent that the, the like the house, house. If you okay, now we are we are inside this house. If you want to communicate with the outside, what do we do? We peep through the windows. Peep through the windows. So there are six windows for us. Otherwise, we are we are 
we are imprisoned in this body, right? Because we have these windows, we don't feel that we are prisoned. Otherwise, if we have don't, if we don't have eyes, no ears, and then the no smell, no tongue, and the tactility. If you don't have the tactility, this is the worst. If you don't have the the body touch, if you don't have it, it's worse. It's worse. Well, you don't understand. Did you ever come across such a situation where? Huh? Whole body. No, not part. Whole body. Whole body where you don't feel anything of the body. It's very dangerous. We we have never thought about it. Say we feel hungry because of the bodily sensation. We feel thirsty because of the bodily sensation. We feel cold, so we put warm clothes. We put off the clothes because we feel hot because of the bodily sensation. And then we feel hungry because of the bodily sensation. If we don't have the bodily sensation, all these operations will shut down. You will die very quickly. This is worse when the body sensation is not there. Okay, so these are the five sense doors and one mental door, mental consciousness, mental sense power. So these are the six windows through which we communicate with the world and universe. These are the six windows. So, is it still in the mother's womb that your senses are developing? Your five senses? Mental is already there. Mental is already there. Only the five senses they are developing. Right? So you have these five senses. Five senses developed, developed pretty much, but they are not operational yet. For example, all the windows are fixed, but people say we don't use these windows for the time being. That's because it's it is not too functional as yet. What's next now? Next you see a couple. A couple. The embracing. So this is, say, the metaphorical. In the mother's womb, in the mother's womb, you have your senses developed. And the job of the senses is to meet with their respective objects. The couples meet. Likewise, the senses. Your senses meet with their respective objects. Your eye sense power meets with the visual object. Then your ear sense power meets with the sound object. Okay, at that point, at that point, uh, the, what happens is that the, it has, for example, okay, um, the Bangalore, you have Metro? Yes. Okay, when, did, when was it opened? When was it started? In idea? No? Five years ago. Let's say five years ago. So before it before it was run for the public, it was it it had a trial run. What do you mean by trial run? See if it works. See if it works. And like a test. Likewise, say the uh, this number six. Number six. Number six. Your senses. Your various senses. They meet with their respective objects. This is not fully operational. It's not fully operational. It operates. It operates like a trial. Like a trial run. It operates, but not fully. In the sense that, for example, let's say, um, okay, this, this flower, what is this flower, by the way? Rajni Gandhar. Rajni? Gandhar. Rajni Gandhar. Yeah, yeah. Gandha or Gandha? Gandha. Gandha. Rajni Gandha. Okay. So this flower. This flower. And particularly this morning when it was first put here. Very fragrant smell. Okay. Instantly the mind is uplifted. You getting it? There, the, your, see, the, your nose sense power comes in contact with the object smell. And instantly gives rise to the nose sense consciousness. And the matter consciousness uplifted. And say, by the way, Bangalore, you have pleasant weather all year long, right? Otherwise, there's in some places, in some places like you know, for three, four months, wet, cold, dark, and the foggy, and the whole house becoming smelly, damp, 
and the mind also will improve you. And then gradually the uh, say the weather improves, and then uh, some people will have some institutions even have sunshine in the holiday. Yes. What a holiday to celebrate that? They they mind they feel uplifted instantly. Okay, so this effect is there. But when we go through stage number six, stage number six, which is contact, contact between the senses and the respective objects, there is a trial. This upliftment, this effect, emotional emotional effects because of the senses is not happening. It's like numbness. For example, if you when you sit for cross legged for a long time, then your feet they become numb. And when you put your feet on the floor, do you feel that? Do you feel the roughness, smoothness? Do you feel that? No, it's just numbness there. We just feel that there's a touch, but you don't know. You cannot discern what that is. Like cold, hot, or smooth, rough. You cannot discern that. This is a numbness. Likewise, initial contact with the respective objects, I sense power, with the, the visual object, you cannot really discriminate things so well. It is not too functional, the sense powers. But it's already start to operate. That is the still in the mother's womb. Your senses come in contact with the, the first contact with their respective objects. What is next? No, I'm asking what's the painting? Alcoholic. No. Oh, an arrow hitting the eye. An arrow piercing the eye. What is that? What is the experience like? If the arrow pierces your eyes? extremely extremely sharp pain so now after this the senses you still in the mother's womb your senses grow matured to such extent that now not only that they, they have come in contact with the objects they could actually have the trigger the respective experiences the feelings okay that is number eight and number seven is feelings okay number seven then we go to 12 what is 12? Consciousness. 12 is consciousness, no. 12 is aging and death. So no, that now the, the, the once we used to that level where the feelings become quite prominent and sharp, then the, 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 the next is number 12, aging and death. The closing the chapter. Yes. Okay, yeah, this is a good question. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, that's a good question. Okay, anybody, we give the answer. Why the name and form comes after birth? 11, then we move to, 11 is birth, then we move to 4. Why the name and form after birth is before birth? Because birth is not, it's actually conception. That is what it is. Okay, birth has two connotations. One is the mother giving birth to the child, and the other one is from the past life you take birth in the mother's womb. So birth here, number eleven, is not the giving, throwing out of the the womb. It is the is the conception, is the beginning of the new life in the mother's womb. That is the birth. Yeah. So what is the painting here is, is symbolic. Yes, Jack. Say it again. You said when we talked about name and form, yes. we talked about body and matter, but you said it was at conception. Say it again. You said that name and form, that was at conception. Okay, meaning in the mother's womb. Right, and now you just, did you just say that 11, 11 was conception? 11 is the initial conception of the mother's womb, then number 4 starts. Okay, so conception meaning in the mother's womb. You being in the mother's womb, you stay for nine months. Which one is that? Four. Okay, conception meaning the first, the first meeting of the, the mind with the parent substance. That is number eleven. Number eleven. Then following moments in the still in the mother's womb is number four. Name four. Consciousness? Oh, <laughs> that's true. 
Yes, that's true, that's true. That's true. Okay, of course, where did you go? Okay, the chandelier gave us the clue, right? Consciousness, it did not hit us still. Okay, consciousness, when is consciousness? After, after what? After Huh? No, no, no. Consciousness, which number is that? Consciousness. Consciousness number three. Okay, and the Jack, I'll say this again. Jack, I'll say this again, don't worry. Okay, now that you're already informed of the 11, consciousness missing, we we'll do it again. Number one is the ignorance, depicted by the, the blind person. And then the, uh, okay, that's fine. Number two, with the ignorance, then you have the cross afflictions, give rise to contaminated karmas, indicated by the second, which is the potter. Potter deciding the shapes, colors, size of the pots. That's the karma decides what kind of bird that you take in the next life, number two. So this karma, once accumulated, that is stored in the consciousness. Stored in the consciousness. That is number three. Number three is depicted by a monkey jumping from one tree to the other. The two trees symbolizing the two bodies of two bodies. The body of the past life and the body of this life. The monkey jumping from one life to the next life. That's number three. Monkey symbolizing the consciousness. Finally, we leave our body and the consciousness will travel to the next body, the body of the next life. Then number four, number three, we went to number eight. From number two, when we went to number eight, now we add number three. One, two, three, number eight. Okay. One, two, three, eight, nine, ten, eleven, four, five, six, seven, then twelve. Let me say this again. One, two, three, eight, nine, ten, eleven, four, five, six, seven, twelve. Okay, this is how we have to go. Then are the after leaving this imprint carving imprint on the consciousness when we are about to die this imprint will be will be nurtured by water or nurtured by the uh, number eight and number nine craving and grasping number eight and number nine craving and grasping these two will be serve as water to water to 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 germinate a seed of karma left on the consciousness so that will become number ten Number 10, which is becoming. Becoming meaning that this, uh, the karma, number 2 karma, it becomes very matured. Like the pregnant woman on the verge to give birth to the child. So likewise, uh, this, the, the karma is germinated by number 8 and number 9. Karma, which is number 2. Number 2 karma, that is germinated by number 8 and number 9. Craving and grasping, germinated germinated to such a great extent that the karma number two will become number ten. Number ten which is becoming. Becoming meaning you are now becoming to give birth to the next life. You are in the process of next birth coming to being. Jack, you need any help? I'm not, I'm not following the, the different number sequences that you okay. just did the first time in this one. Okay, let's say this again. Um, okay, first, first just follow the instructions that I'm giving and then later on we will say why this or the alteration is happening. Number one, two, three is fine. But then you just went from two to Okay. Uh, first let me, let me apologize for my first mistake. I missed number three. Now we begin fresh. We begin fresh. No, no. no, that's easy. Okay, first let's uh, start from fresh. Let's start from fresh. Ready? From the clean slate. Again, once more. Number one, two, three. Then go to number eight, nine, ten, eleven. Then we go to four, five, six, seven. Then we go to twelve. Okay, yes, yes. This is this is the initial explanation. 
Okay, so the mistake that I made is that I skipped it number three. So that karma accumulated, that is stored in the consciousness. Number three. Number three is consciousness. The karma is stored in the consciousness. This karma will be carried all the way down to number ten by consciousness. Okay, one, two, three. Then we move to eight, nine. This karma, karma number two, which is stored in number three, consciousness, that is germinated, watered, germinated by number eight and number nine. Because of this germination, this karma, number two karma, stored in consciousness, will, be, will turn into number ten. Will turn into number ten, which means that the seed, initially is just a seed. So when, with the water, then the seed becomes so germinated, so mature, to the extent that it is on the verge to give rise to the sprout. That is number 10. Then from number 10, then it will, your mind will be ejected from the, your previous body, ejected. The moment it is ejected, then you connect to the next life. Okay, in between, let's say, the next life, let's say, um, this, so somebody dies here in Bangalore and will take birth in Delhi. So this mind, this mind which is now, which phase? The last moment of the mind, last moment of your, last moment of your mind in Bangalore. What is that of the twelve things? Huh? Last moment of your mind while you are in Bangalore. What is that link? Not 12. Uh, number 10. Number 10. When you karma, when you karma to take birth in Delhi, that karma ripens too much to the extent that you're almost being ejected out. Number 10. Okay. So Jack, what I would say is that all these are in detail explanations here. All these explanations are there. And the uh, there are some of them who are doing the, the uh, master's course. They can also help, help you, and we can also, you know. So this is the twelve things dependent origination. Sarvastava Sutra is hovering around that. So we can do we will uh, the do this over and over again. Okay, it'll come. So number ten. Then number eleven is your mind ejects from this life and connects to the next birth. That is number 11. Next birth, that is the first conception in the mother's womb. Number 11. Then from there you grow in the mother's womb. Still in the mother's womb, you grow. That is number 4, number 5, and number 6. In the process of number 6, then you come out of the mother's womb. Then, the number 12. No, feeling is number seven. seven. While you go through number seven, feeling. Okay, that's in the. When is birth? Okay. Because you said six, but then that's contact and feeling. So I would think feeling would be actual birth. Okay, birth meaning from the month. Yes. Okay, so this is this is not here. This is implicit. The number 11 is birth, that birth and the birth that you are talking is different. Yeah, that's correct. Yes. But then you just said that it... Number 6. 6 was... Number 6. Was birth, you labeled that as birth. No, 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 no. 6 is... 6 is inside the mother's womb or inside the mother's womb both. 6 is a long process. Inside the mother's womb, you could... And when you are very mature in the in the month's womb, you could feel. Feel that is seven. That is seven. Okay. So so what when you say inside the mother's womb. Okay, feeling, feeling, feeling. Six is contact. Six is contact. Yeah. So seven is feeling. And feeling would be outside the mother's womb. Uh, no, in the mother's womb, outside the mother's womb, both. Because feeling even in the mother's womb is very prominent. Give me a clue. When is there what I would consider birth? 
Okay, say the, uh, in the mother's womb, the doctor is there, the doctor will explain to you more. In the mother's womb, the, the child kicks the, you know, kicking, all these things happen. Yeah, feeling is very prevalent. In fact, come out, the child starts crying, right? Which means that the child has a very strong feeling. Feeling of cold. They are two different, yes. For example, and, and so, so it, it can start wherever it starts, inside, that's okay. Where does outside the womb in this wheel begin? Okay, that is not explicitly mentioned here. It, it, it falls under the category of the feeling. Coming out of the mother's womb, this is what you're saying. This is what I'm saying. Yes, I know, I know, I know. This is, this, Jack thinks that it's very important. But here in this six, the, the 12 things dependent origination, that is implicitly said, it's not explicitly said. Because finally, then within that, with the feelings, then the karma is already accumulated. Again, the next circle already started. Why in the mother's womb? Already, next circle, cycle already started. Within the mother's womb. So the focus here is about focus here is about afflictions, karmas, and the suffering. Three. This is the focus. But it's implicit between six and seven, right? Uh, six and seven covers implicitly covers physical birth. No, implicit meaning the the birth. Physical birth is only not with the six. Six is contact. Contact is only in the mother's womb, not outside. Contact meaning uh, they will bear contact, just a mere contact, mere contact without the feelings, without the gross feelings. Contact plus feelings happen all the way down, all the way in the mother's womb as well as coming out of the mother's womb. Okay, why I'm rushing through this? Actually, this Sadhis Tamasud, if you're interested, we did this into great detail. We did this great detail as a part of uh, 12 years of dependent origination. I think, yes, we did in great detail, not under diploma course. We did also there. I did not take for granted that people know this. Because here, this is just four days. And we did just this uh, Wheel of Life for about like seven days. And here we are doing everything. Wheel of Life, then Sadhisattva Sutra, and the word everything in for five days okay um, but the good thing is that we have the group discussions and in between you have you know you have discussions and you have more questions if you are the colleagues cannot um, you don't get the satisfactory answers again you can bring this up in a class I'll be very happy okay good yes after 6 is 7, then go to 12. Yes, the why will come later. First, yes, don't worry. The why will come later. Why you can ask later. For the time being, let's go 1, 2, 3. 8, 9, 10, 11, 4, 5, 6, 7, 12. Okay. Now, the next question is why? The order that I gave you is the, this order is known as the, the causal order, the causal sequence. The order that I gave you is the causal sequence. Okay, the causal sequence, whereas the order given by the Buddha in this wheel is to explain how it is a wheel. To explain how it is endless. So in the, in this depiction, the order the Buddha gave is half of one previous wheel and half of the next wheel mixed together. Half of the previous wheel and half of the next wheel mixed together, which means that before this wheel finishes, before this wheel really finishes, another wheel is already started. Not only another wheel depicted by the second wheel, symbolized by the second wheel, innumerable weeks wheels begin while the first wheel is not yet finished. Then, 
the next, when this wheel finishes, this wheel, when, while the second wheel is operating, again millions of wheels will be created along with this. So that is endless. So to tell us how samsara, wheel of life, wheel. So our, how our life, samsara is a wheel. It is endlessly many. This is to depict that. Okay, so we say number one, okay, I'm sure it should be there in this. Okay, so so why I'll, I'll have to already explain this is not in this book. I'll explain the why. Let's say um, this wheel, this whole wheel, twelve links, the twelve links, they're divided into four four limbs. Four limbs. All twelve are divided divided into four limbs. Four limbs. Okay. Um, one is the projecting limb. Number two is projected limb. Number three is the producer limb. Number four is produced limb. Projector, projected, producer, produced. Okay. One, two, three is the projector. Projected in one, two, three. And then we jump to one, two, three, then we jump to uh, no, don't say produce limb. This I will explain. We just limbs. We jump to eight, nine, ten, eleven. We jump to eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. So the eight, nine, ten, eleven, these okay. We jump to that. that is the produced, not the projected. Projected limb. Projected limb. 8, 9, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. Then the, what is next? 4, 5, 6, 7. These are the 4, 5, 6, 7. This is produced. Okay. Say it again. Okay. Let's uh, do it like this. Uh, one, two, three is what? Projected. Projected. Very good. And then we go to number, let's say, okay, let's start fresh. One, two, three is projector. And then the number eight, nine, okay, eight, nine, ten, these three, oh, not eleven, don't miss up, these two, okay, eight, nine, ten, these are the Okay. Okay, eight nine ten is the the uh, produ produced. Eight nine ten is the you know, producer. Eight nine ten is producer. Okay, uh, don't mix up. One two three is projector. Eight nine ten producer. Then eleven. Eleven. Is the produced. 11 and 12 is produced. Yes, yes. Okay, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. 11, 12 produced. 4, 5, 6, 7 rejected. Projector, projected. Projector means, say, you shoot an arrow, shoot an arrow, so releasing the arrow is the cause, and the effect is hitting the target. You project the arrow and hit the target. Is there a time gap or not? Is there a time gap? Yes. yes. So this one has projector and projected. First, what is the projector? What are the projector limbs? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three are the projector. And what is the projected? Four, 
Okay, so the projected four, five, six, seven, they will happen in the next life, not this, not this life. Not this life, it will happen next lives. So therefore, there's a time gap, time gap between the projector and the projected. Right? Okay, now what is the produce, producer? 8, 9, 10. 8, 9, 10 happens towards, closer towards the, the death. Closer towards death, when we are about to die, then 8, 9, 10 happens. Then where our karma? Our karma is going to be activated. Activated by the number 8 and 9, attachment and grasping. And then the, the birth, which means the, uh, the becoming, where the karma becomes the germinated. So that is the producer. And produced, what are produced? 11, 12. Huh? That is a producer. 8, 9, 10 is producer. And then the, the produced? 11, 12. So now, produced and produced, produced and produced, there is no gap in time. Produced and produced, there is no gap in time. It's just immediate, just the digital link. Connected. No, no, no. This is produced. Producer and produced. Producer is number 8, 9, 10. Then instantly will be followed by number 11. Number 11. So number 11, then number 12. To go into more detail, number 12 is not simply last moment of the death. It's not. Number 11. Number 11 is the birth, in the, the first conception, the mother's womb. Then the second moment, the 12 has already started. Aging. It's not that just death, it's aging and death. Moment, the, the second moment starts, we have already started to age. Okay, so producer and produce, these are a set of cause and effect. There's no time gap. Projector and projected, there's a time gap. So projector has connotation that you project the you say the arrow or something and then it takes time to feel the result. Okay, so to tell us to tell us that this cause and effect, there are two sets. There are two sets, so the, the two wheels. Although we see one wheel here, actually there are two wheels. Two wheels. Projector, projected of one life and the producer produce is implicit. Producer and produce explicit of another life and the project projected of the other life is implicit. So this is put together, the two wheels to put together, telling us that before we finish the first wheel, so many other wheels are created, already started. So this is the whole idea. Okay. Any more questions? Before we go any further, yes, Jack. I understand what you just said. That I believe that the producer and produced are in both of those lifetimes that you talked about, the projector one as well as in the next one. Okay. So we see that the producer produced, producer produce the difference, produce as the cause. Produces the, produces the effect. Project is the cause. Project is the effect. So we see that there are two sets of cause and effect. Do you see that? Within the same wheel, within the same wheel, within the same wheel. Okay, right now, which of the link we are going through? Six and seven. Right now. Huh? Twelve. Anything else? All of them. Oh, wow. That's interesting. No, no, no. We are going to the first projector. Okay. Okay. No, of the 12. Of the 12. Let's not talk about the projector. Projected. They keep them on aside. Of the 12 links in details, tell me which links we are going through now. First, second, third. First, second, third. First, second, third. 12. Huh? Seven, eight, nine. Okay, name and form. Yeah. Name, and, 
name? No, 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 no. Name form is in the mother's womb. Name form is explicitly in the mother's womb. Name and form. Name and form. Contact. The sense sources. Sense sources meaning that you have the sense sources, but they are not operational. Non-operational sense sources. Number, which is number the six, number five. five. And then the number six, contact. These are in the mother's womb. Number four, five, six. Seven half. Seven. seven half in mother's womb, half more, more outside. So seven is outside inside both. So we are going through which which of the things? Seven, 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 seven. Uh, one, two, three, seven. 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 <laughs> okay, uh, so without any controversy, no controversial, right? Very clean, what? The one, two, three? And then seven? And 12. This is without any the complication. Very easy. Then, then the complication would be 8, 9. 8, 9, 10. Okay. 8, 9, 10. 10 is not really the case. 10 is not really. 10 is not. 10 is not. For sure. 10 not. 8 and 9. Some scholars say that even now, when we go through excessive attachment and the craving, uh, 8 and 9 is operating. But some scholars disagree with that. Disagree with that, saying that 8 and 9 is exclusively when we are about to die, where your, so of the millions and trillions of karmas that we accumulated, one is going to be picked up, picked up, okay, metaphorically picked up, and that is going to be germinated. For that matter, then the immediate attachment, aversion, are the no attachment and grasping, craving and grasping, destroy, acquire. As the water to nurture this the particular karma, not all karmas. Okay, 8 and 9, generally speaking, the scholars will not accept 8 and 9 is what is operating now. Where is this operating? Okay, and number 12, aging and death. Say it again. It is now. It's it not happening now. now. Because every time I've ever heard of this wheel, attachment and, and grasping are the things that happen right now. So you're telling me it doesn't happen now, then when does it happen? Uh, which one? <laughs> it is now and closer towards the death. Is, it, is that, are we talking about that being the throwing karma piece at closer to its death? Why would it be closer towards death than today as well? Okay, because number two, how many number twos we have? What is number two? Huh? Contrary karmas. Karmas to project us, projecting karma. Karmas, there are two kinds. Projecting karmas and completing karmas. There are two. Projecting karmas are the karmas which have the power to project you to the next life. And there are many karmas which cannot project you in the next life. For example, very mild karmas. Say, uh, you and you in out of, out of a little concern, you smile at somebody. So that is a uh, you know, virtuous karma. So then, and then likewise, you have a tinge of anger, then, you know, very mild anger. Again, at the very small negative karma, they don't have the capacity to, to project you into samsara. So they are known as the completing karmas. They are not the projecting karmas. Projecting karmas are very intense virtuous karmas or the very intense non-virtuous karmas. Okay. So now all these, how many such karmas are there which can potentially project us into samsara? Millions and trillions are there. Of these, of these, uh, say how many would be activated? The, um, when will this karma to project to the immediate next life be activated? Now or closer to his death? Closer to his death. Because at the moment, at the moment, what kind of karma is going to be activated at the time of the death? We are not sure. Closer to his death, very strong virtual karma may, you know, very, very good thoughts may arise in you, anger may arise in you at the time of death. So that karma may dictate your next life. Which means that 
that karma to dictate the next life will be activated only at the time of the Puzu Puzu death. Which one? Seven. Seven is projected. Projected. Yes, Jack. You just talked about virtuous karma at the time of death. Where is that in eight and nine? Okay. Because you're telling me eight and nine don't happen except at the very end. And, and, I, and I'm lost by that. I take grasping and attachment for all the karmas. And if you're going to get some. Eight and nine is not karma. It is nine is to germinate the karma. Well, the germination of the karma, eight and nine, the two terms are grasping and attachment. Yes. There's no virtue in grasping and attachment. Exactly. So in fact, the, you just gave the example of the virtue. Yes. Say the, even the virtues, virtues to germinate this karma, germinate even the virtuous karma, virtuous contaminated, preserving karmas. We need the attachment and grasping. We need that. So finally, the whole idea is that we are just rushing through. The whole idea is that at the time of death, say, if you are to take birth, if you take birth as a human being, which is the result of a virtuous karma, the, the result of a virtuous karma, if you are to activate this virtuous karma closer to the death, then what happens is that, say this person, they doesn't want to die, doesn't want to die. So this craving that I should not die, craving that I should live, this craving is the one which makes the something to move for you to live more. But this body doesn't listen. This body you have to leave. Then what happens is that instead of making the body to and then of course there are stories where people don't die because their mind doesn't let go of this body there are cases the moment you trigger some thought processes the person instantly dies there are some cases there okay keep keeping that aside say even if you are to even if you are to take a virtuous birth next time but we are still in samsara we have not seen emptiness directly because of which that the craving for us to live is there. That craving and the grasping that makes the, the person to not to, wanting not to separate from the from this life. So that's the craving and grasping. So this will then activate whichever of the karma is more powerful. If the karma, virtuous karma is more powerful, that's going to be activated. Why this craving and the grasping? Is one is virtue, one is the non-virtue. Don't look at it from this angle. Look at it from the craving and the grasping. Is to craving and grasping that I don't want to leave this body. I don't want to die. I want to live. How to live? Option only option is to live the next life. What will help you to next live the next life? What what facilities you have? It's the karmas. I think the, he's talking about uh, non-projecting karma. No, no. The the uh, Jeff got it. Jeff, what Jeff is saying is that the karma to be activated if that is virtuous, then in what way these two, the grasping and the attachment, number eight and nine, these two are non virtuous. These two are non virtuous. In what way they you know they work in they work closely with the virtues. This is. Uh, the Jeff's question. Right. I, I'm assuming that at the end of this cycle for you, you're going to be at peace when death comes. And, and you're not going to grasp or be attached to life as. Oh no, it's not like this. Unless, until, unless, until. Uh, okay. Until, until which you be read gate, gate, para gate, fa. No, 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 no. So the point is that let's say, let's say if if I have reached that level, if only if I reach that level, I've not reached that. 
if I've reached that level, for this matter, just say anybody who reached this level, you, me, whoever reached that level, then what happens is that at that point, the still the karma is operating. Still the karma is operating, but there the karma to decide your next life. Next life. And that too for the for the Bodhisattvas, not for the Shravas and Padi Buddhas who is the third level. Not that. For the Bodhisattvas, the karma to be directed is not directed by the negative the of the afflictions are required, but directed by the power of the prayers for the Bodhisattvas. So, so they only have ten levels. No, what I'm saying is that there afflictions are required, but influence on affliction is very less. It is like for example, let's say that you eat a food. Eat a food, and a food with a little bit of garbage. Right? Majority is a proper food, a little bit of garbage. For example, you sell grains, right? Some people they sell grains and grains and a little bit of sand also mixed so that the weight increases. You get more money, this is what some people do, right? So mixture is there. Likewise, for the Arahats, not Arahats, Aryas. For the Aryas, Bodhisattvas, they are the majority of the, the push of the karma to take birth is the powerful prayers. Powerful prayers, but affliction is also there. For the, for the Bodhisattvas, high level Bodhisattvas, afflictions, they are not really scared of afflictions. Low Bodhisattvas, the first two Bodhisattvas, they are more scared of the afflictions. The moment you reach the, the level three, the part, the three part of seeing, so there, they are not really scared of the afflictions. In fact, they can play with the afflictions. They can make the afflictions go for them. Rather than afflictions, they dictate them. This is the, the difference. Okay, so anyway, the Bodhisattvas on that level, they operate and what for the ordinary people, what or, for the ordinary people how this operate is through number eight and nine, which is purely afflictions. For the bodhisattvas, number eight and nine is there, but to direct the the birth, where going to take birth is by the power of the very powerful prayers. Okay, any more questions? Yes. So these twelve links are not causally linked. Number one. Okay, 12 lanes, 12 lanes as in the painting. As in the painting is not costly, it is on the basis of the to, it is on, the purpose is not to give the causal connotation, the purpose is to connote the, that this is the wheel, it's an endless uh, suffering. But there is a two set of causal right? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, this is a good question. So what do you mean by, let's say, in this while we are alive now, one, say, we are going through, say, um, say one particular wheel, one particular wheel where number seven is operating, number seven and number twelve, these two operating now, one wheel. And there are many other wheels also operating. Right? While this problem, for example, we are going through the feelings. We are going through feelings and we are also going through number 12. Number 12 completion, the how part is not yet, how part will come only late. We are going through that. While we are going through that, we are also going through, as only I said, 1, 2, 3. We are also going through 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. How many 1, 2, 3 are there? Huh? Innumerable one to three, innumerable one to three are created while we are in this life. Even today, just today, just today, right? Say, with a very powerful virtues come to you, you have one to three of virtue. And say, the anger comes to you, you may heard of me very what? A sad news from somewhere, a tragic news, you become so unhappy. Again, another chapter. So innumerable such chapters have been opened within the very day, like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 can be a new 
new wheels have been set in motion. Okay, Ravishi. Say, say again. Uh, meaning? Okay, this is a good question. Okay, so for this, we this has a very detailed study here. For example, say in how many lifetimes one wheel will complete within how many lifetimes? This is another question. All these are there. We have skipped all these things. How many one wheel? requires how many lifetimes to complete. It says minimum two lifetimes, maximum three lifetimes. But three lifetimes lifetime doesn't mean that this life, next life, the next life. And the three lifetimes in between they can be separated by millions of lifetimes again. Right? Millions of lifetimes. Okay. Say so for example, say this life and right now we are going through number 7 and number 12 of one particular wheel. Meanwhile, say the, okay, let's say this morning, okay, Sari Sama Sutra, we are so fortunate that we met with such a precious sutra. It's very strong, you know, aspiration to, to learn about this sutra comes to you. So that is a very virtuous karma. So this virtuous karma, you can towards the, so which means number one, two, three. Number one, three, already you set in motion. One, two, three. So this wheel. And then before we die, immediately before we die, what may happen is that, what may happen is that um, instead of this karma getting activated, another karma will get activated. So next life, next life, this karma, one, two, three, is for the temporarily it is there. This wheel is there. And because that is project what is this? One, two, three, what is that? Projector or projected? Projector. Projector. So it is already shot the error. Arrow. So the arrow is in the air. A means you don't see it. It is not with the arrow holder, nor the target. It's somewhere in the air. So likewise, one, two, three of this life of our having a human virtue karma of this text started and then it was kept for like the, the what do you call it suspended for say the next life it discontinues discontinues meaning it is not terminated but it is the imprint one two is karma number two is consciousness so this consciousness this consciousness this consciousness next life so this imprint, this imprint on the consciousness will be there, but it's not in an active state. And like this, it can go for like millions of years. And after one million years, suddenly uh, this karma that we can now, this may seem to be the most powerful of all the karmas that we have. Then this will be activated. So this life, this life, and the, the last life where it was going to be activated, like two, and then the resultant life, resultant, the effects will be felt in the third life. So this time, three lives. And quickest in two lives. Quickest in two lives, which means, for example, this life, number one, two, three. And before we die, before we die, then what happens? If this comes to activate it, then? Yes. One, two, three, already done. Then before we, if we do for another life, let's say, 40, 50 years, then the, say the, the moment we are closer to the time, then number 8, 9, 10. Right? Okay, so in this life, 3 projector, 3 produced. You get it? 3 projector, 3 produced. 6 causal factors are there. Then what happens? We die. 2 produced. You have 2 produced. Okay, 1, 2, 3. No, producer. I'm not talking about the producer, I'm talking about the projector and pro the projector and the producer. How many projector? Three. Projector three. One, two, three. That we are doing now. And the, the producer. Closer to the death, the three producers will be activated. What are they? Eight, nine, ten will be activated. 
Then instantly we go to next part. That is 11, 11, 11, that is produced. Produced and then 11, 4, 5, 6, 7 and then 12. All will be experienced, all will be experienced in the very next life. So it's quickest, the 12 will complete within two lifetimes. And the maximum it will take, it will require, not take, it will require three lifetimes. says first of all that the connection from this life to the next life connection from this life to the next life rebirth for the rebirth how do we prove rebirth this is in a way this is a question this is a question now, if the rebirth is there then this is obvious so this how do we know that this is operating? We see what we are going through now. This is very obvious. No, that's very obvious. That's very easy. That's very easy. That's the easiest. Most difficult part is the rebirth. No, no. Most difficult part is the rebirth. That part is very obvious. If we give a little bit of time, we rush through this. Otherwise, this is studied for, you know, we can study it for many weeks. Because for us to digest these things very systematically, see the, you know, how the first takes to second, third, we just rush through. Even in the Malaysia universities, Malaysia universities where people are so trained in logic, reasoning, philosophy, psychology, even there we study this for like you know, a few weeks, one or two months we study this, and here we are just studying one day. No, 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 it's not a point. No, what I'm saying is that. To study what I'm saying now, to know the efficacy of this, is not difficult. Inside this, there's one area which is difficult, that is the rebirth concept. Because we are talking about the birth, 12, number 10 becoming, and the number 10, 11, birth. Which means rebirth. Rebirth. That is the complicated part. How do we convince that? Once that is this, if you are convinced about this, if you are happy about this, then the 12 things is easy. That is not difficult. Because, say, on the one, what are you doing now? What are we doing now? Of course we can see that there is ignorance. With ignorance we accumulate karma. And the karma, even by the law of physics, even by the law of physics, you see the, 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 the energy, Law of conservation of the energy, law of conservation of the momentum. So there, nothing go waste. So this karma will not go waste. If it doesn't go waste, then the, in what way it comes to result? It is stay there within our mind, and then there's going to be a time. If there's a rebirth, then something should be, something is coming out. Next slide. That's coming out from where? From this life. From this life. What is there within us from this life? This body will not go to the next birth. From the mind, within the mind, what goes there? What makes it go there? It's the movement, the karma. That's what which makes us to move to the next birth. That karma. Move to good, move to bad, all this is what is you know, that's the karma. Because the result, we see a result there. The result must be because of the cause. Because of the cause. cause. And the cause of this life that we are doing here. So what is that thing we did in this life? 
to make sure that the, the, the next slide the result is good, the result is bad. What things that we do here, that is the cause of that, the good thing. So that is not difficult. The most difficult here is the, the rebirth. That is the most difficult part. That requires a very extensive study of Pramanavarta which have to do. Okay, we stop here. Okay, now it's very strange. We will continue half an hour or we tea break? I think we will continue half an hour and half the afternoon. Okay. Is it okay with everyone? Yes. Yeah. Can we continue for half an hour and half the tea afterwards? Is then we we'll have to. Yes, yes, you Okay, tea afterwards? Yes, yeah, just half an hour. Half an hour, then we'll. From 2 30, right? 2 30, 3 30, 4 30, 2 hours. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, half an hour, then we'll stop here. Yes, really. So I think uh, 4, 5, 6, 7 is actually the result. Yes, yes, yes. Result, there are two, two results. Right? There are two, I, I said there are two sets, of, two sets of cause and effect. Projector is a cause, producer is a cause. Projector is a result, producer is a result. In total, in total, six causes and six results. Of the six results, Number 1 and number 12, they are the projected and number 4, 5, 6, 7 are the produced. Uh, Krishna, this sounds uh, slightly like, you know, like, so when, uh, when during, the, during the next birth, it's when, when uh, a person would have a next birth. Mm -hmm. So, some of it is already decided during the time of death itself, the, the mind already prepares like, if, uh, if I die in Bangalore, and suppose if I am born in Delhi or something, so, the, so before the death itself, uh, or, uh, it's already decided or not? Yeah, is the okay. decided before the last breath? Or okay, last breath it or can so. be, it can differ. In some cases, already decided. In case, if, it is, if there is no more powerful karma, it ascends. So while, okay, let's say we are planning, we are planning to go to Delhi from here. And we are at the airport. At the airport, I, I heard a news that I lost my mother. I lost my mother in, say, Goa, let's say. Then from my journey towards Delhi, I have to change it to Goa. Otherwise, the plan is to go to Delhi. Likewise, if nothing serious comes in between, then you already decide to take birth in Delhi. Yeah, more powerful karma can come in between. For example, closer towards the death, closer while you are in bed now, it is like the last few minutes. And then suddenly, you know, the, your, your child comes with such anger that you did not sign that paper, sign the paper, you know, for my, for my for the house, right? You don't sign it for me, right? You have signed it, you have to do it now, do it now. <laughs> Then the sadness and the agitation of the, the parents would be so much, then the karma is going to be so intense. Yeah. These things can happen. Yeah. Yeah. So therefore, it is said that, particularly for us who believe in compassion, who believe in compassion, who, who want to undermine the self and attitude to the maximum, right? Not necessarily for others, for your own good. For this life, for next life, both. In which case, we be more sensible to make sure that you, you know, the, the people who are dying, let them. The priority is that the person dies peacefully. That is more important, rather than you know you craving for your wealth, your share, property, and so forth. There are some people you now they don't think about this. Just the last few days, you know, then the, the children they come, they force the parents to sign. All these things happen. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? If not, we we'll continue. Okay. Now from the twelve lanes, from the twelve lanes, 
on the okay um, just for the study of the Salistama Sutra all these details which we went now projected, projector, producer, produced they are all not really necessary if you have them this will help us to understand the Salistama Sutra rise to the Sutra more but if you, even if you don't have these still the Salisam Sutra, we can understand it. Okay, it doesn't matter. So with this, just to give you a more bigger picture now. Now, if this is how the wheel operates, if this is how the wheel operates endlessly, what can we do to sever this wheel, to come out of this wheel? So, you see the Buddha outside the wheel, the Buddha. So we should become like a Buddha. And how did the Buddha succeed in coming out of this wheel? How did he succeed? Tell me. No, no. How did the Buddha succeed to come out? Not the Buddha succeed to take us out. Achieve the enlightenment. How enlightenment? Understanding is not getting rid of the Buddha. Understanding is not getting rid of the To cut the root of this suffering, which is ignorance. How to cut that? Okay, wisdom of emptiness. So in other words, what you can see is that you cut the link number one. You cut the link number one with the painting. You go to the painting. If you cut the link number one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve, all will be cut automatically. If you cut the first link, then all what follows that will be cut automatically. Okay. So that that is the sever the link number one completely from a mind, cleanse the mind completely of the ignorance, that is the moon. Moon up there, which the Buddha is indicating. If you don't want to be in cycle, then be like that moon. The Buddha is indicating, is pointing his finger to the moon. The moon symbolizes the mind, and the fullness of the moon symbolizes the, the fullness of the purity, where the many departments are gone. Particularly the ignorance, where the ignorance is removed. Okay, next question is, how to do that? How to achieve the moon, like the full moon, where the mind is freed of all the black black signs or the metal departments, freed of the self grasping. How to do that? That's depicted by the two stanzas below the moon. Below the moon, two stanzas. These two stanzas are enlarged at the, the, the base the base and the translation you will find in the following pages ok, page 2, uh, 3, 2, 3 page 3, 2, 3 so there the two stanzas are there in English strive to eliminate the defilements enter into the teachings of the enlightened one just as an elephant in the midst of huts destroy um, the destroy the host of the Lord of death those with conscientiousness engage in the dharma of the pacification, abandon the cycle of birth, and bring an end to the miseries. These are the two senses uh, depicting what we should be doing. In other words, we are talking about the four noble truths. Four noble truths. What are the four noble truths? Suffering. Truth of the suffering, truth of the cause of suffering, truth of the cessation of suffering. To the path leading to the cessation. Okay, you just guess from this painting. Tell me the first truth. Truth of suffering is indicated by what? From the painting. From the painting there. Tell me which indicates the truth of the suffering. Three realms. Three realms. Very good. Three realms indicate the truth of suffering. Now tell me what is the second truth? Cause of suffering indicated by which? In a more circle. In a more circle. Okay. Then what about huh? It, okay. In a more and the second circle. In a more two in a more circles. Very good. Two in a more circles. Contaminate karmas and afflictions. These two, these two are the truth of the cause of suffering. Okay. What is next? Truth of the cessation of suffering indicated by 
The moon. Very good. The moon. Okay, what is next? To do the part, the Jesus says, you need to get it by the two stanzas, the two verses. So this also teaches, is a teaching of the following terms. Okay. And this also is the teaching on the Ye Dharma Mantra, Ye Dharma Hindu Prabhava. All these phenomena arise from the causes. All these phenomena, particularly miseries, arise from causes. So the miseries indicated by the third wheel and the causes. Hetum Tesham Tathagato Hiravata. These causes are taught by the Tathagata. What are these causes? Which the Tathagata taught? The afflictions and the contaminant karmas. Indicated by the two inner circles. Tesham Charyu Niruta. Niruta is the cessation of the suffering. That is indicated by the moon. Niruta. Evam Vadi Mashravana Soha. So, the the Tesham Charyu Niruta, the truth of cessation is explicitly taught, and the truth of path is implicitly taught. Because the, the courses are taught. What the causes and the cessation of causes when taught, then the path how to cease this, the causes also taught. That is implicit. Okay, the other Bhagavad is also taught here. Four noble truths taught here, and the three noble truths, the three, the three, three jewels, three jewels Buddha Charan Gachami, Dharma Charan Gachami, Sangam Charan Gachami. Okay, um, the Buddha Charan Gachami. If you don't want to be in this wheel, we should seek the help of someone who's out of the wheel, who's already out of the wheel. Who's that? The Buddha. So the Buddha up there indicates the truth of the no, the jewel of the Buddha. Buddha Mishra Kashami. Then if you want to be free from suffering, then what should we do? We should achieve the moon and the two verses. If you have these two, then you can come out of the, the wheel. So these two indicate the Dharma Musharam Gachami, Dharma. What's next? Sangha Musharam Gachami. So anybody who is anybody who is following the footsteps of Buddha, following the footsteps of Buddha to cleanse the, the mind, to make your mind more like a moon, more like a full moon. Anybody who removes the metal departments from the root, that is, part of seeing. Anybody who reaches part of seeing, the Buddha indicated the the what? The pinnacle. Pinnacle of the Sangha. The most important figure of the Sangha. And then anybody who followed Buddha's paths by removing the metal stains through seeing emptiness directly, they are the Sangha. So this is also a teaching on the three jewels. So three jewels are taught here, four the books are taught here, Yedarma Matra taught here, and the twelve leaves taught here. So this is a very comprehensive teaching. Okay. With this, we go back to the Salistamba Sutra. Okay, on page 63. Page 63. Um, we are talking about the, the three conditions. What are the three conditions? Unwavering condition. Condition of impermanence, condition of concomitancy, or the condition of potentiality. Three. So, on the now we are talking about the in relation to the third condition, condition of potentiality, or the condition of concomitancy, which reads from this fourth last line, fourth last line of page sixty-three, fourth last line, which reads, that is to say, ignorance causes formation. Formation meaning. The, the contaminant karmas. Formation here is the contaminant karmas. So the contaminant karmas are accumulated by the ignorance. Contaminant karmas are not accumulated by the pure wisdom. So it requires the concomitant causes. And the karmas, formations cause consciousness. Formation, uh, the, the second link of karma gives rise to Consciousness. This karma is instilled, is stored in the consciousness. Consciousness causes name and form. That is part of the sequence that you see in the wheel. Wheel, name and form. Name and form cause 
they be actually the name core name form causes. It will cause it to be better. Name and form should be treated as one link rather than name and form as plural. It treats one link. Causes six sense sources, race number five. Six sense sources cause content number six. Content causes fading number seven. Okay, 64, first line. Basis is the first line. Feeling causes craving, number 8. Craving causes appropriation, number 9. The difference between the craving and the appropriation, appropriation of, or the grasping. So, so this is uh, the translation of this particular translator. Otherwise, the appropriate, in English, in English it's much more same. To appropriate, to grasp. Craving and appropriation, the, differ the difference is the intensity. The number nine is very highly advanced and intense version of the craving is number nine. Appropriation causes becoming number ten. Uh, becoming causes birth. This birth is the conception of the mother's womb. Okay. And the, the some people may ask the question: um, What about the? What's the difference between the projected limbs and the? Uh, the producer links, both are causes. Projector is also a cause, and the producer also a cause. What's the difference? Time gap. Time gap. Producers for the want the germinating effect. Say again. Producers want the uh, for, for conditions. Germinating effect. Okay, Time gap. Okay, 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 where the cause and the effect is so immediate. That is the producer and produce. Where the time gap is there, it is projected and projected. This is how we said it. So, uh, the question that comes to us, the question that can potentially come to us, is the projector and proje the produce and produce. There's no time gap. Okay. Then the question is that if somebody dies here, Then takes birth in Delhi. So, what are the last? What are the the per, pertaining to this wheel? This wheel that you die here and you take birth in Delhi. That particular twelve links. Now, what is the the last link of this life before you take birth there? Becoming. Becoming. Number eight, nine, ten. Eight craving. Number nine grasping. Number ten. Becoming. Number 10 is the last one. Okay. From number 10, then the, the wheel, to continue the wheel, then you have to take birth in Delhi. That is number 11. So number 8, 9, 10 is what? Projector is a cause or effect? Cause or effect? Cause. Set of the cause. Set of the three causes. Uh, causes, there are two. Projector or the produced. Producer. 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 So the producer means producer and produce. There's no time gap. Yes, no. Yes, there's no time gap. But from you die here with becoming, and then number 11 is in Delhi. Between Bangalore and Delhi, you have to travel. Yes? You manage to travel. So is there time gap or not? Not much. Yes, yes. Not much means there is. There is or there is no? There is time gap or no? No, 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 no. My question to you is that this one wheel, that innumerable millions of wheels are being, you know, thrown into motion, but we are talking about one specific wheel related to the next immediate birth. Next immediate birth, birth which is 11, 11, that happens in Delhi, and the immediate, the former life, this is this life, last number, that is number 10. Number 10, and the next, number 11. Number 10 is produce, producer or projector? Producer. Producer. So producer, by the very meaning, producer, produce, there should be no time gap. Huh? But there's a time gap. The birth in the bardo will be immediate. If there's going to be a bardo, I mean, it has to be before, and then that's another cycle altogether. And then finally, the rebirth happens in Delhi. Okay, so from what Shandila is saying, is that in between, there's a time gap, there's a rebirth. There's bardo, 
Pardon means intermediate state. That's the intermediate state there. Right? Intermediate state there. Okay. So which means that produce and produce, that's the... That's the time gap. Okay. The, uh, the, to make it very easy, right? There's time gap. Time gap here meaning, say, separated by other lives, other lifetimes. Will not be separated by other lifetimes. Whereas, project and projector, projector and projector, must be, project and projector, can be separated by, can be separated by many lifetimes. Whereas the produce and produce, can never be separated by other lifetimes. It is just the, the connecting part of state, intermediate state, can, in, the, can, the, can be there in between. It is there, it is there. It is there, we are talking about the, the gap, time gap, many time gap, intercepted by the other life, other lifetimes. Okay. Any more questions? So this is the, the question which is bound to come, if you're able to get this. Ravi, do you have a question? Uh, so we should have a projector to produce, there can be many lifetimes, but producer to produce? Uh, there's, no, there's no life, there's no interception, interjection by the other lives, it's only the related parto, parto related to your next birth, intermediate birth, which is related to the next birth. It's like preparation for the next birth. Jack, you have a question? So clarification. What you said earlier was from producer to produced, there was no time gap, it, it is immediate. Now you're rephrasing it and saying there's no lifetime between producer and produced. Yes, there yes. There will be a time gap. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. Okay, so because they know, say the these subtle questions, if you don't bring this up, then later on somebody somebody bring these questions because this is the answer. This answer, in other words, is that where the produce and produce, the result is immediate. The result is immediate, not intercepted by no possibility for interception by any other lifetimes is very immediate this is meaning whereas when we say this then the people can come up with you know some these small questions if you don't solve these uh, questions then later on when somebody throws the question you may get lost okay for that reason i'm bringing up these questions to make things clearer otherwise for example say the buddha said what there's no form, no feeling. Form is there, feeling is there, right? There's no paraphrasing. It is just to say that it's implicitly, they say the word, there's no form, no feeling. Meaning, there's no intrinsic form, no intrinsic feeling. Those two, these words to be qualified. Okay. Say it again. Parto can be? Length of time. Oh. 20 years, 50 years, 5 days. Okay. The standard text. The standard text says the maximum lifespan of the parto is 7 days. Seven days. The maximum lifetime of a parto is the seven days. And so parto is for you to do for the to do for the next birth. If you don't find the birth, again you will take the next parto. So like this, how many partos can you take one of the other? Maximum seven. One time, maximum seven days, maximum seven days. Doesn't mean that you have to go through seven. Maximum seven days. And then this seven day lasting parto. How many of such partos can you have in one go? Seven. So seven into seven is forty-nine days. So maximum forty-nine days. Okay, what does this actually mean? Like uh, one parto to other parto means that uh, somebody dies, they go searching for the birth, but they don't get it, and they come back to the same body. No, 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 no,
No, this is your, your mind, you, you, in the parto stage, you have a special body. Special body, referred to as the mental body. Mental body, which, is, which manifests from your own mind. Which is not like this gross body. It's not at all gross, it's a very subtle body. With this body you travel, and it's so fast. It's so fast, and it can penetrate the, the walls without not being injured by the walls, not obstructed by the walls. So this is part of it. And then you die after seven days. If you don't find a proper place to take birth, you die. And again, immediately you take another part of The part of life is seven days. Yeah. So, so each part of our life would have a different mental body. Yes, yes. Meaning that, say for example, it is like, uh, say my hand. My hand, if I'm sick, my hand will be very inactive. And the next day, if I get recovered, my hand will be more active. It's the same hand, one is active, one is inactive. Likewise, the mind. But these two, hands, these two old hands are, substance-wise, it's the same substance. But these two are different. One, one is one day older than the other one. Right? So likewise, say the parto, the first parto, second parto, the difference is, the second parto is the, the few days younger than, no, older than the, no, younger than the earlier one. No. Otherwise it's the, the, the same mind, continuum of the mind is the same. So from this, the mind manifests in the, the metal body, and when it dies, the metal body will not be that, it will simply be withdrawn. Okay, uh, we continue reading this. Uh, page 64, page 64, uh, second paragraph. Oh no, the first, feeling, feeling causes craving, craving causes appropriation, appropriation causes becoming, becoming causes birth, and the birth causes aging and death, sorrow, lamentation, suffering, despair, and anxiety. Okay, causes aging and death, Sorrow, you know what sorrow is, lamentation, the grief and so forth, then the suffering is the, the physical pain, and despair is a mental despair, and the anxiety. Thus does this entire great heap of suffering arise, arise from these twelve legs. When ignorance ceases, when ignorance ceases, so we see that the first link, the first round of the repetition, ignorance causes formation, formation causes consciousness. This is known as the the, uh, the 12 links of dependent, dependent origination pertaining to the pertaining to the uh, the afflictions. Now this one, ignorance ceases, formation ceases. This is the 12 links of dependent origination pertaining to the the purification, pertaining to the virtues, which means that when ignorance ceases, then the, the virtue grows out of that. Then you purify the negativities. When the ignorance ceases, formation ceases. When formation ceases, consciousness ceases. When consciousness ceases, name and form ceases. When name and form ceases, the sixth sense source ceases. When the sixth sense source ceases, contact ceases. When contact ceases, feeling ceases. When feeling ceases, craving ceases. When craving ceases, appropriation ceases. When appropriation ceases, becoming ceases. When becoming ceases, birth ceases. And when birth ceases, aging and death. Sorrow, lamentation, suffering, despair, and anxiety cease. Okay. So the first one, the first set of the, the recitation uh, tells us or teaches us as to how we, we are trapped into samsara. The second paragraph tells us, teaches us, as to how to be, how we can come out of samsara. Okay, this is the dependent origination. Who's ever sees dependent origination will see the dharma. So, Shariputra asks this question, what does it mean by dependent origination? Then Aramatriya then explain when the Buddha said, who's ever sees dependent origination will see the dharma. Here the Buddha of the, was referring to the dependent origination, the Buddha was referring to the the three conditions. Because this exists, that exists. Because this is produced, that is produced. Because of the ignorance, the formation is 
it's created and so forth. And because the ignorance ceases, the formation ceases. So this understanding, whole of this understanding is the understanding of dependent origination. Okay. From this we come to learn that from this we come to learn that dependent origination here. And we also learned the three levels of dependent origination. So this dependent origination which we learned here, it corresponds to which of the three levels? Top level. The first one. Okay, this is very important. This is very important for us to know the let's say dependent origination, we talk about three levels of dependent origination, we talk about the we talk about the twelve levels of dependent origination, we talk about the the, the two sets, the three uh, the set of three conditions. So what is this whole dependent origination which Aramantri explained to Sherry Putra uh, pertain to the three levels? It's more to the first one. Okay. Then the next one is what is dharma? What is the dharma? The dharma is the eightfold path of the noble ones. Eightfold path. What is the eightfold path? The right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. Okay. So we'll just quickly identify these and then we'll stop here. The right view. Right view is the view of selflessness or the view of emptiness in the meditative, in the meditative experience. In other words, you are meditating the view of emptiness the, or the view of selflessness while you are in a meditative experience. That is the right view. Number two, is the right intention? Better would be right thought. Young type of topa. Right thought or right reflection is your intention. Intention is not a good tra translation. In Tibet it is Yang Tabu Topa. Okay, so this is when you come out of the meditation. When you come out of the meditation, then uh, say the, the thought processes thought processes which make you to teach, which make you to guide, which make you to converse with other people, other people on the concept of selflessness and emptiness. When you come out, when you come out, when you talk about the concept of the reality, emptiness, selflessness, so there must be a thought process going in your mind which dictates you or which decides what to speak. So these thought processes when not in meditation, when come out in meditation, this one has the right reflection or right thought. Then the right speech. From these good thoughts, from these virtuous thoughts, then the speech that comes out should be the right speech. You don't talk any harsh words. You talk only good things, right speech. And right action. So with these thoughts, what come out from your mouth should be virtuous speech, or what come out from your bodily action should be virtuous action. Then right livelihood, how we lead life, how we lead life. Speech, okay, right intention is a right intention, right thought, that is the mind, what your mind is like. Then the right speech, your speech, then right action. The bodily action, the physical, so physical, body, speech and mind, three. Then right livelihood, this is with the body and speech both. Right livelihood is the body and speech both. Say with the further livelihood, then we sometimes we might have to tell lies. Uh, this is not a good speech related to your living. And then sometimes what you do, it not be also um, the Physically, what you do may not be also so good, you know, body language to, you know, deceive others. Okay, so this is right livelihood to make sure that the, say, your lifestyle must be so pure. It should not be based on deceit, deceiving others. Then right effort, right effort, the joyous effort. Well, with this, okay, so this is very practical for the monastics as well as for the layperson. 
even if you are a lay person, even if you have to work for your livelihood, make sure that we have these things intact. Uh, the right speech, uh, the, of course the first thought, right, right thoughts with the end, then the right speech, right action, and the right livelihood. With this, your mind will be very confident. In fact, one of my friends, one of my friends, he asked me about a dilemma. He was very serious, he is very serious into Tamil practice and uh, he is getting some, what do you call it, some uh, support money from the government and he was a little apprehensive because that with this support money he is studying Dharma. That's very good. But then he was just wondering whether it is legally allowed. Legally allowed because if to get this support money, a few qualifications are there, criteria are there. Whether or not he is fulfilling these, and then from how this he was discussing with me, I could see that mentally he is not settled. With this unsettled mind, you go for meditation, meditation will not be successful at all. Not at all. Okay, and then he, I said that just try to go in line with the law. What the law says. Don't be afraid of losing your livelihood. Somehow you manage. What the law says, try to do that. You must, Allah's whole purpose of you is to practice Dharma and then your mind is constantly being pulled by one sign whether I'm doing something legal, legal or is illegal. Then your mind is constantly being, you know, the harassed the, by this, uh, by this thought and then the Progress, whole purpose of you, the, the spending so much time with Dharma, is to progress and you will never progress. And then the, he decided on that basis, and then he searched more, he did more research and he realized that what he was doing is perfectly legal. So he was so happy, he was just this burden simply was removed and he, he said that the, his mind felt so light, now ready to do any kind of the meditation practice. Okay. Right effort, right effort is with this, all this preparation, livelihood, right speech, right action, mentally you are prepared. You are mentally you are prepared to embark on this journey. Journey with the joyous effort. This effort, in Tibet it is Tsurwa effort, but it should mean the joyous effort. Okay. With the joyous effort, what do you do? You focus on the mindfulness. Mindfulness. To make sure that your mind is driven towards the intended object of meditation, mindfulness. That mind is driven towards the intended object of meditation, mindfulness. With this mindfulness, then your concentration will come to be. Ability to focus your mind there. Ability to stay in one object for a long time. Right concentration. This oilful part of the noble ones combined with the attainment of its results and Nirvana is what the Bhagavan has called the Dharma. Okay. Eightfold part of the noble ones. Noble ones meaning the Arya beings, the beings who realize emptiness directly, who, who has direct realized emptiness, combined with the attainment of his results and the Nirvana. Nirvana is the main result pertaining to pertaining to the, the result common between the Bodhisattvas and the um, the Shravagas Buddhas. So then the one is a common result and the results here, the results, other results referring to the, okay, results here refers to the three, four results. Results of the stream enter, once returner, no more returner, and arahat or nirvana. Let me say this again. The result of the stream enter, stream enter result, stream, stream enter. Yeah, stream enter result. Number two, once returner result. Once returner result. Number three, no more returner results. And number four, arhat. The four, with the emphasis on nirvana, arhatship. With the emphasis on nirvana. Okay, so here nirvana is set separate to emphasize. To emphasize. So these four of the four, Nirvana is the, the, the most important. It's 
what the Bhagavan has called the Dharma. Yes? Yes. That means that if somebody does not have a view of XP uh, of X or of happiness, they will start their journey into the eight noble truths. Eight noble paths. Eight for noble paths. Okay. Similar tube we can have. Similar tube we can have. But if you don't know if you don't know mathematics, if you don't know physics, then how can we embark on the, the journey of becoming a Nobel Prize in physics, Nobel Prize winner in physics? So to embark on this journey of the Eightfold Noble Paths, uh, the, we have to learn the wisdom. We have to learn. And initially we can you know, follow that in the form of similitude, where some of them are real, some of them more like... But we have to study, we have to study. Yeah. Okay, so I know that you want to know what the four fruits are. This is going to tomorrow. Yeah. Il dom gadi